Hey, welcome everybody. It's Mark Miller here from Dev Express. Roy Becker's on the line with me from England. Roy, you want to say hi? Hey, Mark. How you doing? You good? He sounds like he's from England, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> we want to say welcome to you to Code Rush. Uh, we do. This video is for new Code Rush users to help you get up to speed quickly. We're talking about just the core, most important features that can get you the biggest bang for the buck. That's what we're here to talk about today. Yep. Um, and we're going to start, dive right in uh, into the Code Rush menu here. Uh, the Code Rush menu, by the way, for me is right up here as the top level menu. You might see it in your extensions menu, um, but it might be here. In one of those two places, Code Rush menu, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the setup wizard first. That's showing up on my uh, other monitor. Let me drag this over. This is the Code Rush setup wizard. Uh, it got each feature that is in the setup wizard. It talks a little bit about that feature so you can learn about it. It's got a learn more button here and you can click and it's got a nice pretty picture so you can take a look at the feature, what's going on, what are the changes, and you can make major decisions with regards to configuring Code Rush very, very quickly. It's very cool, very quick setup. It's important to note though, Mark, that of course you can run through this as many times as you like. So pick the set of features that you feel appeal to you immediately. And then if you want to come back and make changes afterwards, you can. And if you need a greater degree of control, the options menu is available as well. This is not the, the totality of what you can do. That's right. Code Rush options is going to be filled with options for you to configure if you want to do that. So that's number one tip is going to the Code Rush setup wizard if you're a first time user for Code Rush. Um, number two, my number two tip is uh, tab to Nix reference. Tab to Nix reference lets you put the caret on anything, any feature, or I'm sorry, any symbol in the code, hit the tab key, and then you're going to just simply tab through all the references to that. And you can very quickly get a sense of, oh, okay, configuration is used exactly three times here in the code. What about over here? Okay, it's used over in these places. What about API? You can just use this to explore code like this, or you can use it as a shortcut to very quickly get to where you want to get, where you want to be in the code. Um, for example, I might want to go jump into Check Viewer. Well, actually, I see it's right down here, so that's not as impressive. What about this, Get Viewer by ID? I don't see it on screen, but I want to get to it. I could hit the Tab key right now, and if there were no other references to it, it would jump me right to the declaration like that. So it's very useful if you want to get to the declaration quickly. Uh, you might have to tab around a few times, depending on how quickly, it's, it, how much it's out there, uh, or to get to a, uh, to see how many times a local is used, for example, like that. Um, the other cool thing about Tab to Nix reference is it's dropping markers for me everywhere I initiate the feature, which means I can jump back to the marker uh, by pressing Escape, like this, or Alt Home, either one of those. It's a really powerful feature, and it's simple to use, simple to um, simple to remember. Tab to next reference, right? To next reference, absolutely phenomenal feature for exploring a code base or indeed finding about the importance, as you say, of a local variable. And whenever you start finding yourself going off and exploring and exploring a bit further, maybe you get distracted and you, you explore a different thing again, you can always go back to where you are. It's like picking up the trail of breadcrumbs as you follow your way back, right. just tapping escape or alt home gives you to the next place that you were, the previous place, and now once more and once more, and eventually back to where you started, which brings back all the context of what you were doing at the time. So you you you're exactly. immediately find yourself at home. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's it's a, a feature we worked hard on. It, it the benefits are small each time, but try once you once you uh, uh, have started to use those, you you the gains are there. They add up, right? You really you really the productivity increases. In fact, if I ever have to switch to an editor that doesn't have Code Rush inside of it, um, Tab to Nix Reference is one of the first features that that starts to that, that I miss. Yep. In a in a pretty big way, um, to learn to learn more about Tab to Nix Reference, just click that link right up there. Uh, and uh, now let's show you the next feature I want to talk about, which are uh, images and formulas inside of source code. So here I've got some source code, and I've actually got some formulas up here. And if we click on the formula and go inside it, you can see oh, it's it's in something that's not that's actually just text. This text is LaTeX, L-A-T-E-X. It is a format for rendering formulas, and CodeRush allows you to specify LaTeX formulas in source code. Uh, pretty cool feature. Um, the, uh, you can also see down here, I've got an image embedded in the source code as well. 
All right, let's take a look at this. I've just got a Google search for beer out here. I'm going to click one of these images. I'm going to right click the image. I'm going to choose copy image like that. And now I'm going to come up into the source code here, right at the top of my beer class. I'm going to add a new comment and I'm going to hit paste like that. And it's simply, it's that fast and easy to take an image from anywhere, copy it to the clipboard, paste it in. I can resize it like that. Uh, I can even come in if I want to right click it and say, hey, let's crop the image, for example. Let's do that, right? I can zoom in. I can do a pixel zoom or kind of a, uh, an interpolated zoom where it's kind of a smoothed out zoom. I can do either one of those and it uh, works fully. Let me just do a few more changes to it like this. Um, it works fully with undo and redo. Watch this, I'm just gonna hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, like that. I can keep going and then I can go backwards, go forwards through the undo stack as well, go back and forth. Um, it's, uh, we've solved a lot of problems and the challenges of putting images inside of source code. And now you can do it in Visual Studio if you have Code Rush loaded. These images will be seen by anybody else who's uh, also got the source code, your source code checked out because those images, those image files are generated and stored for you automatically in a subfolder of the solution. So all you have to do is check that in as well. And now everybody on your team who's got Code Rush will be able to see your formulas and to see your embedded images. There's a fantastic couple of features there, Mark. First of all, formulas, which can be as, as simple or as complex as you like, but obviously stand out really well from the code and can give somebody with the right knowledge exactly what they need without necessarily having to interpret that code. Secondly, you've got images that you can dot around wherever is relevant. So you can have images of uh, a product or of a screen or of that little back of a napkin diagram that you did with your friend in, in the conference room, but you know, you just took a photograph of and then embedded straight back into the code. You can yes. zoom in on any small part of it you like. You can report a bug, a graphical flaw in something that you've got. And again, it can be right there in the code. There's nothing quite like a picture. What else are you going to say? Oh, it's the third pixel on the left? No, 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 no. Here is a picture of exactly what is wrong. Fantastic yeah. stuff. Really yeah, yeah. clear. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Like I can come in here and grab this bit right here, for example, and I can say, okay, let's right click this or let's find something that is that is uh, that is that's useful that we want to include in the source code, that sort of thing, and we can make that we can take that code, we can co copy that bit, that formula right there, go into the code where we need it, and sometimes I'll do this: is I'll put this in, I'll put in whatever the reference is, and I'll start writing the code for the reference, so it's right there, right, right yep. next to my code, and then when I'm done, I simply delete it, and I'm good, right? I'm good to continue working, right? So it's just uh, sometimes I use it just in a temporary way. Sometimes I do it for like, um, uh, we did it on our live stream that we have on Twitch, Rory. Uh, I'll yep. tell you more about that. I'll give you a link to that uh, later on. But um, on our live stream, uh, we uh, put in a, a reference for uh, cropping and scaling calls, which had something like eight different parameters. And, and it yeah. was a visual showing which parameter represented which piece in two-dimensional space. So um, yes, it's, it's incredibly powerful. Um, and, uh, and if you want to learn more about that, uh, just click that link uh, right up there. Okay? Excellent. Next, I want to show you Smart Duplicate Line and Smart Duplicate Selection. Very powerful features of Code Rush. Uh, I can, I'll show you Smart Duplicate Line first. I'm on a line, anywhere on the line, I can just hit Shift Enter, and it'll duplicate that line, and it will create text fields where you might want to make changes. And if you don't want to make a change, you just hit enter. So I'm going to hit enter, enter. And right here, I'm just going to type in, uh, hey, Rory, like this. And I'm going to hit enter like yeah. this. And now that I've done that, and I'm coming here and I now do it one more time, Code Rush will have learned. And it's now going to come in and say, well, you only change the part between the quotes, right? And yep. so now I can come in and uh, say uh, something else like, hello, uh, hello, folks, like that. It's worth reiterating again that that the feature doesn't have any built-in innate knowledge of the .NET framework. There's no knowledge of console or the methods it has or you know anything like that. So it is literally doing analysis of the way you code right, and the fact that you have made these changes. So if you had a more complicated structure or a slightly different one, it would have picked up on that just as easily. And it's, it's basically doing pattern matching, very clever, intelligent, subtle pattern matching, yep. which will certainly make a lot of these things a lot easier. Yes, um, let's take a look at it with selection. So I can select something that's even like multiple lines of code like this. And I can say this, and I can say, uh, and by the way, notice the pattern in the code in the lines above. 
Um, I've got if statements, I'm returning a one, a two, a three. I've also mm -hmm. got this from a ARGB call where the parameters are changing uh, as we go by a certain amount each, each, each uh, step here. And so let's go ahead and hit shift enter on this and see what happens. And let's hit shift enter again and shift enter again. Uh, and you can see what's happening as we go down here. We're actually changing the gradient and you can see this little color swatch right here, which is telling you what that color of this is. This is also a Coderish feature. Yep. Um, we can click this, by the way, and that brings up the Coderish color picker, so I can make whatever changes I want to make here. Um, so that's smart duplicate selection. It's got a lot more uses. It's got a lot more intelligence that are built in, or I guess maybe we can call it quote intelligence, right? It's looking a lot more pattern matching. Um, and uh, it's looking at those things. And it is, uh, it's a feature that we are uh, continuing to invest in. So it is, uh, it's a huge time saver. It can often, uh, you can, I, I, on the show, uh, the twitch.tv slash code rush show that Rory and I do. Um, you can often see us using this feature to build up like, you know, multiple lines of code without anything at all, without writing it's any code at all. It's a huge time saver in the right location. It really is. Yeah. Um, and any kind of pattern that you've got within your code, that, like enumerations being a great example, um, just so much simpler. So yeah. much time saved. So it does know, it does, Roy said it doesn't know about the .NET framework, but it does know about enumerations, for example. Yeah. So if you're working on code that's kind of slightly changing and we're changing by the enumerated element, CodeRush can detect that and advance that for you automatically. Coders can also advance, uh, detect binary numbers or hexadecimal, hexadecimal mm -hmm. numbers and detect if they're being incremented by one or if they're being doubled, for example. So um, there's a number of things that we've got in the pattern matching and as a result, it's a huge feature. Definitely you want to take a look at it to learn more about smart duplicate line and smart duplicate selection. Click that link right up there. All right. Okay, next, I want to talk about the debug visualizer. I'm going to open up another project here. I've got some breakpoints in it. Let's just hit start on it. When I hit start, the toolbar is going to change. You're going to see the debug toolbar come up, and on that, there's going to be a button, which if you click it, if you click this button, it's going to enable or disable the debug visualizer. So those super cool glasses right there, that's the debug visualizer. So we want that on, and with that on, when we hit our breakpoint, notice a couple things are different about Visual Studio. One of them right here, you've got the date is actually showing up right underneath there. So you can see the date and time there are showing up right underneath that date. Uh, yep. The latitude showing up right there as well. I think I've given away my time and location. Um, time travelers <laughs> might be appearing any moment at this place. It's a big faux pas if you're going to make time travelers angry with you. Um, uh, down here, you can see my value float here. If I hover over that, that value is zero. But the value that's displayed underneath the expression is 7.17. It's showing you what is going, that value is going to be before you assign it. And now if I hit F10, watch this. Notice this block of code here. It's all emphasized at a normal level like we would expect if we were editing the, editing the code. Watch what happens when I hit F10. We've now de-emphasized this block of code. That tells you you're not going to go in there when you hit F10. When I hit a, and also right there, big clue, the word false is showing up right here. Let's yeah. hit F10 again. And now down here, we've got a false here in Southern Hemisphere. There's something happening you probably didn't notice, but there's an animation happening in the code. It's subtle and it's small, but it's happening so there's not an abrupt change. Right, Everything that we do, every feature we design, we think about it from the standpoint of, of the science of good design, the science of great user interfaces. And one of those things that we're doing here is we're making small subtle changes so you're not distracted while you're debugging. So if we do this again, now I call attention to this, right? If I hit F10 again, watch this. You're going to see right underneath here some animation as I hit F10. Just a little bit. It throws yeah. in the true value there so we can see what that value is. And now we see we're going in here. Now we're not going in there, but we are going over here. You can turn individual features on and off about the debug visualizer, but it's pretty cool. Let me show you one other thing you can do that's um, a, a real game changer. When I hit F10 and go down into this next line, I see that it's false. And I want to know why it's false. I can just hit Alt down arrow. And now I can just start exploring the different expressions and see what's going on. Notice that the false in the middle is highlighted bold and bright green 
That's yep. telling me that this expression is the one that led to this unexpected value, Indeed. right? Because our assumption is, hey, if it's expected, you're not going to drill in to find out why. But if it's unexpected, we're going to figure out which of these in the Boolean expression, because these are all anded here and the other two are true, this is the one. And there might That's be it. more than one, for example. Sorry, Roy, The great just... part about this feature, Mark, is that it shows you the minimum necessary initially. You might only care that the whole of the expression evaluates to false, and indeed the de-emphasized code below that shows you're going to have a, go and hit an exception. But you might ask yourself, well, why? And that's when the alt down, the drilling into the next level of this comes of age, and you get the, the three distinct parts. As you say, highlighting the middle part, saying this is the relevant bit, this is the bit that is causal in that higher level value, and you can drill again into each and every part of this until you get the exact reasoning for your current state of affairs. It's a fantastic ability to, to drill as far as you like in a debug session and figure out why. Yeah, right. It's an excellent feature. To learn more about the debug visualizer, click that link right up there. All right, the next thing I want to show you just really quickly here. Let's go ahead and we'll let this, we'll, uh, let this continue to run. Um, let's go up to uh, our beer demo class and let's create a new class up here uh, above our beer class, call it uh, beer truck. So we're going to call this beer uh, truck like that. And uh, let's create a, a new function and a new method in here called uh, load like that. And uh, we'll do this. And I'm just using hitting the letter M and spacebar like this. Let's create uh, unload like this. By the way, that template expansion key, you can set that to a space or a tab. And you can do that in the setup wizard that we showed you at the beginning of this video. Indeed. So very cool stuff. It allows me to very quickly create methods, create properties, um, that sort of thing with the templates. So I'm not going to go into detail on these right now, but if you want to learn more about how to write code with fewer keystrokes, which, can means, which means you can write code faster and also write code with a lower cognitive load. So you're not thinking so much about the specifics of, of what letters need to be pressed on the keyboard, but you're thinking more about the specifics of the design of your product. If you want to learn more about that, there's a, there'll be a link down in the description. Check out the description for a link to CodeRush templates. Two more things I want to show you before we get out of here. Uh, one of them is the CodeRush cheat sheet. There's a link to that as well down below. Um, the CodeRush cheat sheet categorizes all of the, uh, the different features of CodeRush and groups them out and gives you the shortcuts there so you can learn those if you want. Uh, if you want to learn how to run the test runner, how to do access code generation refactoring, and even the code rush templates. So there's things in here teaching you how to create new instances, how to create read-only fields, methods, properties, read-only, write-only, auto-implemented, type reference, all of those things, how to write code at unbelievable speeds with very few keystrokes. And as I said before, you can watch Rory and I Dog Food Code Rush live at twitch.tv slash code rushed with an ED at the end of it. Um, you can watch us on Twitch live three days a week. We uh, are at five o'clock. We start at 5 p.m. British Standard Time. Is that right, Rory? That's right, yes. British Standard Time and also uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time, 12 noon uh, East Coast time in the United States. So watch us, come check us out. You can also ask questions on the live stream. Absolutely. We'll, we'll answer your questions live right there. We'll maybe create demos. We'll create templates for you. We'll show you how that works. And we're going to write code because we're dog food in Code Rush. So check that out. The last thing I want to show you is our Code Rush feature of the week playlist. There's a link to that as well down in the description. Take a look at that. We've got Feature of the Week videos over a year's worth of features. If you watch yep. one of these oh, every week, you're going to need more than a year to get through all of these. Each video is about 5 to 15 minutes long. We go into each feature in depth. You want to definitely check that out. Um, and with that, I want to say thank you, Rory, so much for helping us out. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for your interest in Code Rush. And thank you for choosing DevExpress. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about CodeRush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest CodeRush feature videos.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.